Dulce et decorum est, by Wilfred Owen, bent double like old beggars under sacks, knock-kneed, coughing like hags, we cursed through sludge, till on the haunting flares we turned our backs, and towards our distant rest began to trudge. Men marched to sleep, many had lost their boots, but limped on, bloodshod, all went lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the hoots of gas shells dropping softly behind. Gas, gas, quick boys, an ecstasy of fumbling, fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone still was yelling and out and stumbling and floundering like a man in a fire or lime dim through misty panes and thick green light as under a green sea I saw him drowning and all my dreams before my helpless sight he plunges at me guttering, choking, drowning if in some smothering dreams you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in and watch the white eyes writhing in his face his hanging face like a devil sick of sin. If you could hear every jolt, the blood come gargling from the f froth corrupted lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as the cud of vile, incurable sores on innocent tongues. My friend, you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some glory. The old lie, dulce et decorum est, pro patria. Maury. All right, today I'm going to be analyzing um, Dulce et Decorum Est by Wilfred Owen. So the meaning of this passage is um, to describe the horrors and atrocity of war and kind of curse people who um, glorify war to children because a lot of people kind of try to romanticize it and say how beautiful it is to die for your country, and it can be, but also there's a lot of pain and trauma that come f comes from war, and that's also kind of part of the antecedent scenario, because um, this man has been in uh, likely World War One, considering the use of gas, and he is, um, he describes the soldiers bent, double, knock-kneed, coughing, cursing through the sludge, kind of walking, march to sleep. It's just, they've been walking and they're zombies. They have been dead because of the war um, emotionally. And um, he just wants to describe how painful this is to the reader and how hard it is. Um, and then division, this poem is divided into four parts. The first part describing how these soldiers are already in pain because they've been through so much and how half alive they are and then it is it ends with the dropping of gas shells and the next stanza begins with the gas spreading um, describing how difficult it was that situation and then the next stanza describes a man who has been caught in the gas he couldn't get his gas mask on fast enough and just the painful situation he's in and how painful it was to watch. And the last stanza um, describes how much this has scarred the speaker. And then it ends with him uh, cursing, again, the people who glorify war. Um, and then the climax, um, it shifts gears a little bit right when it mentions the gas using the onomatopoeia gas, gas, quick boys, um, or the dialogue, and it talks about how painful it is um, in the memories, so I guess the climax is him reminiscing or remembering how painful um, it was to watch this man and the pain that he went through, and it also kind of shifts tone at the end um, where it's not talking about war, it's talking about how people um, describe war to children. Figurative language, he uses a lot of um, imagery and repetition um, in the last two stanzas to show the pain that this man went through and the trauma of seeing him go through this pain. And it uses a lot of imagery to show how difficult war is and how much it scars people. 
And the skeleton, or the dynamic curve and emotion through the whole poem, is just kind of a sleepness and deadness, the drudgery of marching, and then it goes to the escalation of emotions where men are fumbling for their gas masks, and then the severe pain that comes from seeing someone who didn't get their gas mask on in time, to um, an emotional arc of anger at people who glorify war to children and um, make it seem as though it's such a beautiful thing. And then Games the Poet plays with the skeleton. The poem does not follow the typical bell curve. It um, kind of ends at a peak. It ends at an anger. It didn't begin at this anger. It begins at description. And it goes from description of war to pain and trauma from it to anger at people who glorify it. Once again, um, also ignore my brother playing video games in the background. I'm living in. And the genre is a war poem. It's just talking about the painfulness of war, and it's clearly autobiographical of what this man went through. Um, the tone is definitely um, darker and kind of, um, like I said, cursing in people in the end. Um, and just describing how hard war was for this man. Uh, with roads not taken, he could have kind of turned it around and done post-traumatic growth and talked about how that man's death, um, you know, was part of the grand scheme of fighting for his country, but instead he's bitter towards people who say that it's so sweet to die for your country. And um, this speech is kind of a protest against people who, you know, have that mindset that it's um, so romantic to die for a country, and they romanticize it. Describing the man's face, a lot more imagery. Um, and then he also kind of uses a attack. He uses a common phrase, is an attack on people. And with imagination, um, this poem was definitely memorable because of how vividly it describes the trials of war and what the speaker went through and how it, it doesn't um, pay homage to the men who fight for their country. It kind of um, looks down on people who say that that's a great thing. It's more regretful of war than honoring of it. And yeah, thank you for listening. <laughs>